night my grandfather dies, it is rainy and drear. My grandmother's in bed, the yard a slew of water. The farm, darkness. It's 11 o'clock, still rain, and my grandfather, Tom Brangway, stands in the yard of the Angel Pub in Nottingham. <clears throat> What a wetness is the night. Hey, Jack, <laughs> which of us is Noah? <laughs> Seems as if the water wax is busted. You need done with the trap there, Tom? Hey, no hands. And <laughs> yeah, we're not stopping here all night. Stand up there, girl. It's not a fit night to turn a dog out. His heavy body motionless in a kind of sleep. My grandfather knows the road well. You can't wait water out. It'll always give you to go by. The trap lurches into a rut and he half wakes, not realising himself asleep. This miserable slop. He's drunk, but not so drunk. Now at his own gate, he moves blind with habit. Go through now. But there is a roar in the night. What is that? Down the slope to the cart shed. What's the miss? There is a wash of water. Well, that's a knockout. Six inches of water in the cart shed. <laughs> Where's that coming from? Hey, hey, what's the miss? Drop of water won't hurt you. There you go now. Oh, oh, oh. What's, what's all this? And he can't help himself to go and meet the running flood. Sink deeper and deeper. He has to go down towards the pond. You're carrying me feet away. Stop now. I, I can hardly turn. The whole black night moves. Oh, hold on now. Suddenly he knows he will fall. Tom. Tom! My grandmother cannot understand the water that breaks through her kitchen. Where did they come from? Tom! Oh, Lord! Oh, Lord! Tom! My grandfather staggers as something beneath strikes his legs. Fighting, wrestling, but always down, falling down, down, deeper, wrestling, suffocating, then up, then fall, then a struggle, a clawing, then over, and spun down, then something hard strikes his head. There is great wonder, then anguish, blackness. Cut burst, embankment down, the unconscious drowning body already way past the house. Perfect calm in death. Oh, Tom, Tom. What are you to me now? I saw your first time dressed in black like now. So small, so slight. You were walking on the road from Cossier. I did not see you. You thought you passed me unseen. <laughs> but I knew then. How can I lay claim to you like now? Like a torment. Like a sense of infinite space. How can I speak for you? You saw me. You looked away quick. But... In death. You lie between death and life. Not one or other. Did I know you? You knew me. After that first time, I hardly did think of you. I was afraid, I don't know. <laughs> but I was... I was aware of you. Your presence, your living not so far. I found out you're a widow. Your husband dead. A refugee. Polish. A little girl. Anna. I shared life with you, Tom. But I always belong in my own way, to myself. I know that. I watch the old woman, my grandmother, talking to the dead, grand thing. Ma! 
Who is she talking to? Shh, Ursula. I never saw death before. I cannot, shall not, recognise it. Go out now. My mother, Anna, she cannot look at the dead thing that is and isn't her father, even as she strips away his clothes. Sodden. Inert. Heap. I do not First know First time you. I saw you, Anna, your hair was like thistledown. Stuck out in straight, wild, flamey pieces. <laughs> you clung jealous to your mother. Do you remember? Coming out of the church? I don't remember. Then you saw something. A quick. What is that? A button. Is it yours? Did you lose it? I found it. Red button. May I have it? You found mother, it. Mother, may I have the button? Mother! What is it? Your vacant look on me. My skin is fire. Mama, may I keep the button? May she? It's not mine. Then yes. Your stare holds me. What's your name? Tom. Do you remember that, Anna? You are beyond me now, Dad. In death. You were just a ghost. In a room. I cannot bear. I am a mother. I am a wife. The girl I was is forgotten. Don't sweep away everything. Make me remember how much I loved you. I watch my mother's twisted face. A child half shock through the door. I look away, run away, not understanding yet. To flee death, it's brutality. My mother leaves too. But my grandmother sits, still. Unraveling her separation like carding out wool with my grandfather. You remember the first thing you asked me for? A pound of butter. In this very room. I didn't mean to come in straight away, but you beckoned me. I only have what's on the table. I went to Mrs. Brown's. She hasn't any. I I'm sorry, I I shouldn't have come. I, I didn't really. What's that? Do you? As your little girl. She's very well. Uh, sit you down, please. You're not used to these parts? No, it's strange. Middling rough. Uh, mm, Our ways are rough to you. Yes, yes, I understand. It's different, it's strange. But I was in New Yorkshire. Oh, well, it's no worse here than what they are up there. No. <laughs> it's a long time that you have lived in this house? I've always lived here. Yes, but your family, your people? We've been here above 200 years. You live here alone? If you call it alone. I rode your little girl. Six years. Your father hasn't been dead long. She was one year when he died. And I could not move away or towards you. How much do I owe you for the butter? Nothing. And even as that small girl, as I watched the body taken away, the coffin and the white flowers and the funeral bell, still the old lady sits on, the emptiness of the room now. My grandfather's great absence fills everything. She talks to him as if he is still alive. She stands often at the garden gate, as if waiting for him. Grandmother! Oh, you, is it? I thought I'd be seeing you. My word, that's a fine posy. How pretty you've made them. I made them for you. This is how the peasants type them at home. Just such tight little bunches. And they made wreaths for their hair. Did you used to have a wreath in your hair? Ah, when I was a little girl, I had golden hair. I used to have little blue flowers. Here. Sit down. I'll tie these into your hair. Little tangles. Oh, you have your mother's hair. <laughs> Why do you have two wedding rings? I had two husbands. Then must you wear both rings together? Yes. Which was my grandfather's? 
The one you knew is the red one. And the yellow one was your other grandfather's you never knew. Where did he buy it for you? Um, or so. Did can't. he have white whiskers as well? No, his beard was dark. You have his eyebrows. Did he have brown eyes? Yes, dark eyes. He was clever, quick as a lion. Did you like my first grandfather best? I like them both. I married the first when I was a girl. And then I loved your grandfather when I was a woman. There is difference. What's different? Well, first off, your grandfather came with wildflowers. Like you already knew I love of them. Uh, <clears throat> I've uh, come to have a word with you. You brought flowers? Uh, just poppies and violets. They grow on my... Thank you. I came up to ask if you'd marry me. You're free, aren't you? Yes. I'm free to marry. You want me? Yes. No. No, I, I don't know. I'm nothing, but with you I would be real. I see your helplessness. And you put your hand here, on me coat. Yes, I want to. And your slow movement makes something break in my mind. It's a kind of agony and oblivion. Where is the child? Yes. You will love her? I do love her. I am much older than you. I'm 34. I'm 28. Six years. And you move away. You are so remote and yet so near. You make my heart bang in my chest. Do you want to marry me? I do. Will somebody love me, Grandmother? No, we all love you. No, but when I'm grown up... Yes. There. And I hope it will be someone who will love you for what you are. Not for what he wants. And I think she means that as comfort, but it frightens me. Like, I have no ground under my feet. I don't know what I am or what anyone wants. I cling to her. Oh, look how pretty that looks. For here, from my grandmother's garden, the way opens to the past. Loves, births, deaths. That is comfort to me. Remember, you have a right to what you want. I don't yet understand the rest of it. Where's Ursula? Keep your voice. The baby just got off. She's gone up to my mother's with flowers. Where's the little ones? Chasing apples, I think. Shh. Oh, I love you more. <laughs> Because of my father's dying. Well, he sharpens everything. <laughs> Off. I'm all flower. Kiss me. Must I? <laughs> you taste of it. Your flower on your lip. <laughs> Don't steal dough. It's kind to take flowers. The sight of the children pleases mother. It's like she wants to draw away. What do you mean? You know. She doesn't want to remember what it was really like. The old brutal story of desire. More desire. Offerings and deep hidden rage. Don't touch that. Who's rage? Oh, you know. Unsatisfied men and that. Hey, I'm not unsatisfied. <laughs> Off. Was your father so unsatisfied? She talks to him like he's still here. Was he unsatisfied? I think she was unknown to him when they first married. All that life she had before. She never spoke of my real father, but when she did, the life she'd seen, 
I think he felt separate and, you know, in some ways, he was a simple man. I think it made him... difficult. You're going to walk around these fields all night? If needs. You can snap up the trees as you pass if you like. I might. Why are you like this? Like what? So antagonistic. Because there's so much distance between us. You drive me to. What? You ask me about my life before. I didn't expect you to go rattling on. I wasn't Without rattling. rhyme or reason. Laughing when I was shot. I wasn't laughing at you. Condemning nothing. Confounding my mind. You make the whole world chaos. That's what he was like, Tom. That's why we came here. We had to flee. I don't understand all that. All that world, all the things you've seen. My husband died for nothing. For ideas, for his rebellion. Do you understand that? I don't know. His work failed. So for him, everything failed. He was dead and he scarcely lived. He never knew me. He never received any of what I could give him. I can hardly forgive him that. If I didn't have Anna with his brows, there would be no more left of him than a broken vessel thrown away. You came to me. You know me. What does it matter who we are? You make fire of me. Laughter. And both of us, I bury myself in you. I don't care about the old secrets. I give you what is secret in me. I used to hate my father. Why? My mother was mine until he... Always, he was crashing in to make everything awake. Now then, Topsy, pop into thy bonnet. Go away. I'm not going away. Go yourself. Hustle. Stir this, then. Up. We don't live with you. You do you. live with me. Me and your mother are married. You, you're, you're a bombicle. I and you're a comical. I'm not what? Not what? A comical. No more am I a bombicle. My mother doesn't live here. Oh, I. I want her to go away. Then wants your portion. You come in or no. The horse is at the gate. I can't fasten my bonnet myself. <sighs> Not bad enough yet. You talk nonsense. <laughs> that face shouts for the pump. Is the horse waiting for me? Aye. Let's finish wiping your face. It'll pass with a cat lick. Coat? Ah. <clears throat> <sighs> now, my young book rabbit. We'll go out in the gig, see what's going. We were thrown together. My mother was soon pregnant. I remember she was so strange, so detached. The year drew on, you know, those dark days when you can't... Oh, I remember. I would run hither and thither, no relief. And my father, he was about his work, heavy as a sodden earth. It was a relief to run outside. Oh, talking of that, here's our girl. Hmm? Now then, who's this? It's me, Dad. You know who it is. Oh, I thought you were some kind of fairy queen. Grandmother tied flowers in my hair. <laughs> now you even look like her. Do I? Hey, did you sup? Bread and butter. Enough. Oh, the witching hour. <laughs> Go call in your sisters. <sighs> Where are they? Up the trees, probably. I'm not meant to no, have that. Oh, hey, go now before your mother comes after you. I'm not you. Ursula Goodrun, <laughs> Teresa Catherine. And don't you know. get so full of yourself. I'm better than that. Wash! Oh. Do you see how she looks at me? <laughs> she's she's so grand. Oh, she looks at me like she'd step over me well, in the street. She doesn't know you yet. Oh, she won't know me ever. That face. <gasps> hey, now you look sleepy yet. <laughs> I don't know my mother yet. She's right. To me, she's so strange, so free of money and convention <laughs> and fear. I <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> She stands by herself, <laughs> without connection. I don't know what you're going to say. Don't say it. But as a child, I am against her. The house, always a storm of movement. Four girls, healthy, turbulent. As I get older, it's some kind of ordeal. Fecundity. I hate that word. 
I know what it's like to live under a storm of babies. So I am against my mother, passionately against her. You should be in bed, Ursula. I'm going now, aren't I? Oh, why, you cross patch? You're not having another one, are you? Another what? Are you? Would you mind so much? People already think we're pigs. I don't the girls care always what dirty. people think. I see my children are bathed properly, and if I satisfy myself, I satisfy everyone. I don't like babies. Might be a boy. I hate boys. <laughs> well, remember that. Do you like babies? You? Later. I do like babies. Did you, when you were a girl like me, when grandmother had another baby? I only remember the first one. When your uncle was born. No. I didn't want to share my mother. Oh, come here. Don't make the baby. Oh, don't frown at the baby. See? Always babies. Maybe it's hardest for the oldest. What was it like? What? Well, when Grandmother had Uncle Fred. Oh, I don't know. When she started with the pains, I remember it made me think of the sound of owls. <laughs> you know, that used to fly around the farmstead. Such a strange sound. Haunting. I don't like it. It's how it must be. And she begins to tell me again of my grandfather. For now, it is he that hovers in the air. Is it very bad? It's not so very bad. Has she got a headache? She's having the baby. The midwife. I want my mother. Uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> Nay, no, not as bad as that. <laughs> Come, what are you crying for? Stop now, it'll make you sick. <laughs> Hush now. Hush. Let it be enough. I want my mother. Come on, Anna. We'll go and supper up the cows. My grandfather takes a big shawl, folds my mother round and goes out for a lantern. Just give the cows their summit to eat before they go to bed. I remember there was a burst of raindrops that sputtered on my shawl. A light of the lantern swinging. Black darkness. I breathed darkness. Here we are. In a sort of dream, his heart sinks to the bottom, the surface of him quite still. My grandfather rises with the pan full of food carefully balanced, the child on one arm, the pan on the other. Uh, there you go now. Will the cows go to sleep now? Yes. Will they eat all the stuff up first? Yes. Look at them. They stand very still, my grandfather in a kind of trance. In his mind, he is with my grandmother, he and she, one flesh out of which a child will be brought. The wrench is not in his body, but the quiver runs through him to his last fibre. My mother sleeps in his arms. He takes her back and puts her in her bed. Then he goes to my grandmother's room. For a moment, I think you're dead. You touch my hand. You're I beautiful. Eyes, but I see the truth. It doesn't in seem face. human, all this. I do not know then what you, you are. You are other than me. When the pains begin tearing, he, he cannot look. He goes downstairs and outside. <laughs> Lifts his face to the rain and feels the darkness striking unseen upon him. The swift, unseen threshing of the night silences him. Here is the infinite world, eternal, unchanging, stepping through the world of life. So you are going to have another baby then? Would that be so terrible? Oh. This is a house of animals! 
children up and down the stairs, cross the wet flagstones, swarming the sofa, kicking the piano to make it sound like a beehive, rolling on the rug, ripping a book in two, children stealing upstairs to find where I'm hiding from them, whispering, hanging on the latch. Leave me alone. My mother flourishes in all this. Was that what my grandmother meant? A woman who didn't care what anyone else wanted? Just give free to her baser instincts, baby after baby? I won't be that. Elaine the fair, Elaine the lovable, Elaine the lily maid of Astolat. High in a chamber in a tower to the east, guarded the sacred shield of Lancelot. I lean on my window and gaze across at the churchyard. That's where Lancelot would ride just now. He would wave for sure, but I would remain high up in my tower. Remote. Waiting. It's locked. Ursula, our Ursula. Hey! What is it? Mother, she won't answer. I think she's dead. I'm not dead. What do you want? Open the door, Ursula. Oh! What are you doing? Why have you locked the door for? I wish you'd just leave me alone. And so I find my father's key to the parish room that stands away by itself in our second garden across the lane and try to escape them. The parish room is magic to me. Away from the children now, away from my mother's luminous body. Here, my father teaches woodwork, two nights a week, to boys. Whatever my father does is magic to me. Whether he comes in with news from the town, whether he goes across to the church with his music or to practice on the church organ. Listening to him singing, his workshop with the boys, he is the centre of magic. Sitting here in his workshop is like some shadow of a dark, potent secret. Casts a spell over me. Who's been in the parish room? The children got in, went in. Someone's like notches. And we're playing. In the chisel. Playing? No. Katie cut her finger. Oh, right. no wonder. There was a lot of blood. I mostly cleared it. I haven't had a chance. Is she all right? It's deep. She was sorry. They're all sorry. So, who opened the door? It was Ursula. Ursula! You let the children in? N no. Hmm? She'd been in the room before. My father has a duster in his hand. And she'd forgotten to lock the door. Oh, and she now? And he snaps it across my face. <laughs> Will! I'm stunned. I'm sure that's unnecessary. <laughs> Think we your duster won't hurt her. Nor will it do her any good. I love my father. His strong, dark soul fixed like a root in unexpressed depths. <laughs> I love him until that exact moment, and then in my soul I know I don't know him. He isn't what I thought he was. I do not forget. I do not forget. I'll never forget this. The seed of defiance burns in me. I hate you. That fire burns away my connection with him. Who is he to me? Why should I be what he wants me to be? I do not belong to you. Only at the stream can I stop. I love the running water. I have passion for all moving things. Only here, only here am I myself again. I crouch very still and watch the water haste over stones. Sometimes a little fish vanishes before real. Sometimes wagtails by the water's brink. And then a kingfisher darting blue and I am myself again. The kingfisher is key to the order of enchantment, but... No. Not you, Dad. No more flowers in my hair. None of it. My grandmother, sitting with the dead, herself a fading queen. My father, all the depths of him and his myths. No more. I suddenly realise that my mother is the only real thing amongst us. Come in. No. I'm never going back. It's getting cold. I don't care. Then come and sit in the church with me. Hmm. 
Why did you marry him? Now that's a question. Was he always like that? No. He shamed me. I know. Does he not know how, how, how cruel? I don't know. He should. He of all people should know. He wanted to he do didn't. that. I saw his face. Gave him pleasure. Such a sense of triumph, of, of, of easy power. I'm sorry, straight after. I'll never forgive him. Oh, don't say that to you. Even all this is his. All of it. I hate it. First time I came in this church with you, Father. <laughs> he sung so loud. I started laughing. What do you mean? Oh, you know. His voice had to fill the church. and It rung out like a trumpet. <laughs> I was giggling over my hymn book. <laughs> you were not. I was. He had to go up and down. His voice rang out. Going its own way. Oh, I couldn't stop. Even when it came to the prayers. <laughs> So he's always been the same, yeah, then? My side shook. Oh, then the sight of him on the brain cushion nearly sent me over. The whole service was a torture. <laughs> Everyone in the church heard me. Oh, I wanted to die. But I couldn't stop laughing. How could you marry him? Oh, even then he loved the church. The making of it. The chancel and root screen and the hatchet carving. Look up there. He pointed out all the meaning of the windows, and somehow he gave me, I don't know, a mystery. Even here, look at that. Through the screen, somehow, further beyond the way the sun spills the colours of the windows. <laughs> he moved me. You can't understand yet. You will. He has a fierce heart, yeah. I hate him. Don't say that. Did my grandfather like him? He was his nephew, he had to like him. <laughs> Once he said Dad was like a tomcat. What did he mean? Oh, that he came whenever he thought he would. So Grandad didn't like him? Yeah, your dad irritated him. Don't tell him I told you that. He's too abstract. I don't mind a fierce nature, but he thinks himself too special. He's like a cat. <laughs> In what way, like a cat? I, I tell you how. A cat can lie perfectly peaceful on a half rug while you're lying a yard away, riving in agony. Oh, good gracious. I mean, what does he really care about anything except his own, what's the word, instinctive affairs? Well, that's put paid to him. So do you like him? Oh, it's Anna who's irritating me. <laughs> Why? She's all changed, caught up in him. I mean, I like him. He's not quite an outsider, but I do not like my daughter to be so under his spell. And my mother can't tell me yet how it was between herself and my father. How he did cast a spell over her. How uneasy her parents were as she went about the house, unnoticing, not noticing them, moving as if she were invisible to them. It made them angry. And did Daddy really love you? Oh, he made me a butter stamper. What was it like? Well, you know he loves wood carving. It was a phoenix. What's a phoenix? Like an eagle, but rising from this circle of beautiful, flickering flames. Oh, I used to love making it over and over in the butter. It was like a new thing come to life. Grandad still didn't like him. <laughs> what do you say it is? A uh, uh, butter stamper. That's beautiful. What kind of bird do you call it? Phoenix, Dad. I told you. It's a mythological bird. I know what it is. Let's go out, Will. I want to see if I put the brick over in the fowl loft. Where the rat comes You've in. You've no need to do that. Come on. <laughs> Quick! <laughs> up here. What are we doing? Escaping them. Why are we climbing up so high? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Both she and Will seem to swing in big, swooping oscillations. Below <laughs> is darkness. I love you! <laughs> My grandfather waits a while, then gets up and goes out. 
Little knowing this is the same path he will one day pass down as he lets go of his life. He looks up and sees the blur of the youth and the girl at the loft door. Here is the first separation. I love you. <laughs> she don't know what she's doing. She... She betrays herself. She's a child. A mere child. <clears throat> she squanders herself. <clears throat> Am I an old man? That I should give her away in marriage? Am I owed? Am I? Am I? I'm not even 40. Who knows her, huh? Me or that bloody blind-headed youth? Who does she belong to? He thinks again of the child he carried out at night into the barn nah, when his wife was in labour. thinks I'm finished. She is going away to deny him, to leave an unendurable emptiness in him, a void. He almost hates her. How dare she say I'm old? He walks on in the rain, sweating with pain. The horror of being old, the agony of having to give up what is life to him. Climbs up onto the embankment which holds back the water that will one day kill him and circles back to the house. Mama, where's Dad? He's out in the bath, I think. Dad! Will and I want to talk to you. At this time of night? Or is it? Your cold's dripping. The night's a squall. More is it? Uncle. Anna and me are thinking of getting married. Oh, I. But how? You have no money. Have you mentioned to your own mother about all this? And what are you going to marry on? Your pound a week? I don't know. Wait, needs knowing. I shall have money later. Oh, I. I shall raise some now and pay it back then. She's a child of 18 and you're a child. boy of 20. Oh. You're neither of you aged to do as you well, like. What's the difference yet? between me now and when I'm 30? A big difference, let us But you have no experience and no, no money. Why would you want to marry? What experience do I want, Hunt? And this is what you want, is it? To get married? It is. I do. You do? Why? I do because I do. What for? You are not my father to tell me. My father is dead. Anna. She is a stranger now. She does not recognise her father. The cold knife cuts him off from her. So what if I'm not? <sighs> One evening the following week, your grandfather found your dad and handed over shares to the farm which he had transferred into my name. How much? Two thousand five hundred Two thousand? It was a great deal of what he owned. He leased us our cottage. What did you do? I cried for a whole day. And then I went down to speak to him and... Um, I put my arms around him and sobbed. He did not speak. He sat like a monument. <laughs> Daddy. You want help so your life might be properly fitted out. I give you that. But you do not need my love anymore. I will help you always, but... He never spoke. What did she say? She cried. What did you say? No. I'm a terrible old man. Look. Look at you. You're satisfied, but me, I want still to be young, to share in the... You're still young. My life's nothing. I have nothing to show. I... I thought this was something. Us. <gasps> it is something. It's everything. You're my be-all and end-all. Sorry. Were you happy, Mummy, when you got married? Come on. Let's go back home. It's cold in this place. All its cracks. But, but this is where you got married? It was. Lift your glasses up. Lift your glasses and drink to the hearth and home. 
hearth and home, and may they enjoy it. Night and day, may they enjoy it. Hammer and tongs, bed and bless, and may you enjoy it. Afterwards, for Will and Anna, it is as if they are the only inhabitants in the world. The rest are under the flood. Oh, don't get up. Oh, can't help feeling guilty. About what? I don't know. That I'm not up and doing. <laughs> what is there to do? Well, that's them onto school. It's just noise and distraction. That's nine o'clock. So? A well, part of me thinks I should get up and wash my sin and be a d decent... <laughs> what? Social... Social? Being, you know. <laughs> you. <laughs> shameless woman. <laughs> I am shameless. You never wash your face. I never wash my face. <laughs> Bright and shameless as a daisy opened out of the That's dew. me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you get up at ten o'clock. You go back to bed at three. Strip me naked in the daylight. I'm trying to. <laughs> you dispose of me as you will. Down with your rules and beliefs. I scatter them. <laughs> <laughs> to think a woman were all about skirts and petticoats. Oh, let the world be rid of all that. A new naked world. Oh, your body is wonderful. Is it? Now, in my world, there is just this one vivid body. <laughs> it's like we're together at the heart of this secret. You're like a flame. Oh, it's like you flow through me and and and, and oh, you consume me. And so they learn to know each other. All that matters is that she should love him and he should love her, and they should live kindled to one another. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying of hunger. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> go on, do get up. Get me something to eat. Well, let me go then. Oh, you're so nice. Hey, don't make me fall back into bed, will you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, I'll bring some bread. <laughs> The world's still here. I'm not letting it in. Someone's left some jasmine on the milk jug. Someone's been and found the door locked. Look. Oh, I love yellow jasmine. I'll wear it in my hair. I'll get the bread. Come back to bed quick. Oh, it's cold. You know, oh, I was thinking, I'd give a tea party. A tea party? Invite, you know, my mother and father and... Oh, I'm glad you did a lot. I'm starving. Mmm. You want some? No. Oh, no bread? No. Mm. I don't want a tea party. What? You want the dead world again out there, all that? No. You want to give up this? Eh? Give up what? <laughs> I just want to have a tea party in our new home that I love. I want to clean up. <laughs> I want to shove the furniture around and put it in new places. I want... You just, I want... You just let everything in again. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Well, what shall I do? I don't know. Shake the rug, if you must hang about. Hang about? <laughs> what work? Well, where shall I do it? 
will anywhere. So easy, is it? Just go for a walk. Go down to the marsh. I mean, don't hang about if you don't want. So all this wonder between us just going to pass away? No, of course. All the love? It's just tea. Will! And so follows two black days. She set in anguish against him. He needs something to do. And he feels as if he's in a dark, violent underworld. She resists him. You ought to be at work. Can you do something? His soul darker. Everything is gone. He remains complete in his own will. Starts to work the garden. Will? I do not exist. You do not exist. I don't want to fight anymore. I will not hear. I will not heed. How nice you've made it. Ah, dear. I am unaware. I will not look at you. I will not. I've mashed the tea, Will. <laughs> Why are you crying? Nothing touches you. You absorb everything into your own self. You don't see anything beyond. I said, why are you crying for? And suddenly he sees that she is of another order and has no defence against him. He sees he's hurt her and comes alive again. Anna. Anna. She is curled up on the bed and holding herself hard so the tears shall not be known. Don't cry. Don't cry. My love. When they come to themselves again, it's night. They lie weak and still like they are newborn. Will does not understand what has happened, only that he has given way. There was no understanding, only the wonder of their being together. The next morning when they wake, it's snowing. Oh, look. What is it? Oh, I thought the light was strange. Much of it. It's smoothed over everything. Oh, there's no world now. No time. <laughs> Just us. I'm glad. So it goes for them. The recurrence of love and conflict. One day, it is as if everything is shattered. The next, it is marvellous. Just marvellous. Oh, it's a marvellous world. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Oh, I'm free. Everything delights me. I love snow. I love ducks. I love it when he goes away and the flow of my life is let loose like this. <laughs> I am free. I love this. I even love hanging the washing in a wind. <laughs> I love it when he comes back, but I love him. But this deep, fierce, I don't know why, unknown battle. Awful. And so it goes on. Well, here's my girl. <laughs> What's the miss for you now? Nothing. <laughs> Can't you hit it off, you two? Oh, he's so obstinate, Dad. And I know another who's all that. You don't want to make yourself miserable all about He's notes. not miserable. I'll bet my life, if you can do now else, you can make him as miserable as a dog. I do nothing. Oh, I. A packet of butterscotch, you are. <laughs> I don't want him to be miserable. Neither do you intend him to be hopping for joy like a fish in a pond, do you? Hmm. You love him right enough. That's all that counts. I do love him. More shame to him. I want to tell him. I've been waiting to tell him. <laughs> T 
Tell him what? What's the matter? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have an infant. And he's never let me. Not once. Every time I come to him, he's been horrid to me. And I wanted to tell him I did. I did. <laughs> and he won't let me. He's cruel to me. <laughs> Oh, remember, between two people, love itself is the most important thing. That's not him or you. It's a thing you must create. Oh. Oh. You mustn't expect it to be just your way. I don't. Look, we was going past that there. He'll be back from I'll work. I'll go call him. No, don't, Dad. Hey, Will, you got to come in here. Anna's here. It'll be all right. Now then. Are you stopping? Sit you down and take a bit off your lamp. How long are you stopping? Not very long. Get your tea, lad. Are you itching to be off the moment you enter? What is it? I think we're going to have an infant, Bill. Why? You don't know? I do. And he struggles in silence. It's as though there's a solid wall of darkness that suffocates me and makes me mad. I'm alone. Cut off. Are you happy? Of course. <laughs> Surprised. Let's go home. And they walk without saying any more. Walk along opposite horizons, hand in hand in the intervening space. Two separate people. Are you afraid? No. What then? It's wonderful. You with a child. <laughs> we made this. And she is happy in showers of sunshine. Day after day she enters into brightness. The child in her shines. <laughs> she thinks I'm a boy. And how lovely is the sunshine that loiters out of doors where the catkins on the big hazel bushes float. One day, bluebells are along the hedge bottoms, then cowslips golden on the meadows. She is full of drowsiness and loveliness. How gorgeous it is to live. To know all this, all this, and myself, and you, and you, you'll see all this. When you're born, it'll be summer. We'll pick these apple blossoms and we'll take them home. I almost don't want to go. We could lie out here and wait for the swallows. When you're a big boy, you can play out here. Run and hide. Oh, here's your daddy. Come back over the fields. Oh, he's not a bad man, but he wants something from me, I know. And it's like a shudder. I don't know. I don't know what it is. You are old. Yeah, and loveliness. Will! I see you, but... But I do not want your flowery love. I will trample your flowers to nothing. What are you doing out here? The meadows. You shouldn't so... be out so far from home, flouting yourself. There's no one here. I'm here. Hi. I look forward to this moment each day. You coming back? Well, there it is. And so it goes on. She cries out to him. He harries her. Then he is ashamed, and still she does not ever heed him. Now I must go on. Hiding up here. But I feel so, so... strange. I know what I want to do. She takes off her clothes and, big with child as she is, she dances there in the bedroom by herself, lifting her hands and her body to the unseen who has chosen her and to whom she belongs. What are you doing? You'll catch a cold. And she lifts her hands and dances. The light glances on her as she makes her fine movements, threading the firelight. I annul you. What are you doing that for? No, no, man. And he stands near the door in blackness of shadow. The vision of her will torment him all his life as something other 
that has no relation to him. Go away. Let me dance by myself. That ain't dancing. She dances his non-existence, dances herself to the unseen. What do you want to do with that for? I don't do it for you. A strange, lifted belly, big with child. The child itself turning and tumbling. She will be shocked when she finds out it's a girl. What hope is there for a girl? How can she find a man who loves her not for what he wants? I can do what I like. Can you now? But for what she is. Cover your sin. He would take everything from me, except for what you want. I look at my parents so young. My mother, embroiled in the potency of my father, the power of his will to exert its destruction. Why do you deny myself? Am I just a body to you? You don't let me sleep. You don't let me live. You just want to destroy me. What is it that you want from me? For she sees ahead years of fighting, wrestling, but always down, falling down, down deeper, wrestling, suffocating, then up, then fall, then a struggle, a cloying, then over and spun down, then something hard strikes her. Like a father caught under the water, thrown, dragged, and then the rock. There is a pause in her swift running. A moment's suspension in her life. Do you ever think what it is that I desire? There is great wonder. Then anguish. And then the water breaks. Ursula was played by Cassie Bradley. Tom by Carl Collins, Lydia by Aneta Piotrowska, and young Ursula by Florence Hunt. Anna was Rosalie Craig, young Anna, Lauren Tanner, and Will, Lee Ingleby. D.H. Lawrence's The Rainbow was dramatised by Linda Marshall Griffiths. It was a BBC Audio Drama North production directed by Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari.